chapter 5. Have you ever tried to do something and give it your best and it wasn't working out and you were just discouraged? You ever been there? Kind of like working, looking for a job and everybody's saying no and, you know, but nobody wants me. Probably one of the hardest things in life to do sometimes, Jared, is to look for a job. It's actually a Sometimes a, a bigger job than doing the job is looking for one. I want you to read uh, with me tonight, read carefully in uh, chapter 5, verse 1. It says, It came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. What a great statement, huh? Amen. The people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. And he stood by the lake in Esseret. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but, fishermen, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. He entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Can you picture in your mind what, what was happening here? Here's some fishermen. They've been out fishing all night. And fishing at night is a good time to fish because you, you put up a light and fish are drawn to the light and then use the net just to pull them in. And so these guys knew what they were doing as far as fishing. They, they'd come in in the morning having fished all night and not caught. What they had caught was nothing. They had not caught one fish. And uh, that can be pretty discouraging, especially when you're doing the right things in the right place and it's just not happening. And uh, Jesus shows up and when he shows up, a large crowd of people show up wanting to hear the word of God. I mean, that's like a, a preacher's dream. <laughs> I want to hear! I remember being in college and uh, having missionaries come from uh, the Philippines and different places and tell stories about walking into a, a village someplace and uh, to also set up a time that they were going to preach the word of God and have people walk for hours to come and have a missionary tell that we we began basically in the book of Genesis and began and we had preached four hours and we were we wanted to take a break and the people said, Oh no, no, Pastor. More. <laughs> you know, and, and today, you know, on the padded pews in a climate controlled building where Lisa told me you can hang beef. <laughs> so she says, How many of you think it's cold in here? How many of you think it's warm in here? That's the problem with every vote that you take, it's a split. <laughs> but anyway, it's 71 degrees, it's according to the thermostat. So, what's that? It's hot. Pregnant woman's hot. <laughs> anyway. Where was that? But they, they would tell about people coming, and they would sit, I mean, for 10 and 12 hours just to hear the Word of God. Wow. The people had come. He was standing by the lake. I think he realized I, I need a better vantage point, maybe to get back from the people a little bit. So he, he steps into Simon Peter's boat and says, would you thrust out into the deep? Could, could, would you do this for me? Take your boat and move away from the shore a little bit so that I can preach to these people. 
So Simon Peter does that. You say, is, is that important? I believe it is, because I believe there's something to be seen here. <clears throat> now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering him said, Master, we have toiled all night, have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. In this chapter, there's obviously more to be seen than a man that fished all night. <clears throat> but I just want to spend a little bit of time this evening on the subject of success after a long, dark night. This group of men had spent a long dark night on the lake of Gennesaret and had failed. They were a total failure and yet they went from total failure to total success in just a short matter of time. Three partners, Peter, James, and John, discovered something on this day that many people just never ever pick up on. They discovered a pattern for success that was involved in doing some things the right way versus the right way. Let me share two truths with you this evening. First of all, man's doing. They failed. These men failed, but they did the right things. They failed but they did the right things. They fished at the right time, which was the night time. They knew about fishing, and they had fished all night, but they caught nothing. That was man's doing. Then there is the master's doing, and when they did what the master told them, they succeeded. Let's get this right. They fished at the wrong time. They fished at the wrong time. During the heat of the day, they only had partial obedience to what Jesus said because if you look very carefully in verse 4, it says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets, plural, for a drop, right? Let down your nets. And in verse 6 it says, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break. And they beckoned them to their partners. He told them to let down the nets, and from what I can see, they only let down one net. I can only imagine what would happen if they had put all nets down. What they would have accomplished that night. The secret to their success was that it was the master's doing. And I think there's some things for us to learn from that this evening. Some things for us to see that we can apply in our own personal lives for the Lord. <clears throat> Number, in verse 5, it says, Simon answering said unto him, Master, 
We have toiled all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now, I've preached from this passage before. And one of the things that had taken me before was the attitude of Simon Peter. Well, nevertheless. You know, we know what we're doing. We've done it, but nevertheless. And I, I always say that attitude's so important. And have you ever let you, has you, something ever happened to cause you to have a bad attitude? Boy, it happens to me. And, and I hate it. I, I don't know what goes on with you, but when I get a bad attitude, I mean, it's like the Lord just starts, so, think I was right? Boy, I hate that. Now I gotta go and I get to go and apologize to people because of a bad attitude. And uh, by the way, I'm one guy that hates bad attitudes. <laughs> you can ask Carrie, I used to, you know, would say that and, and she would throw an attitude. Now, as a child in my home, to throw an attitude was not a good thing. <laughs> I didn't deal well with attitudes. You know, it'd be better to smile and pretend than to slow and throw an attitude. That was going to be ugly. And it is ugly. Right. They said, we've toiled all night, we've taken nothing. They admitted they failed because they were doing it in their own strength. This is a classic example of the failure of the flesh. They did it in their own strength. Samson did the same thing, remember? In his own flesh. He, he failed miserably. He thought, I'll get up and do it again in, my own, in his own flesh, but he failed. How many times do we have to fail because of our flesh before we learn to depend upon the Lord and be obedient to him? <clears throat> it should make us uncomfortable when we do that same thing, we work in the flesh and we fail. We, have, we need to learn to admit that I can do nothing without him. I can do nothing that's of eternal value without the Lord Jesus Christ, without obedience to him. Then he said, nevertheless, that thy word there was an agreement to, let me say this, to hear the word of God. An agreement to hear the word of God. Because what came out of Jesus' mouth was the word of God. There was an agreement not only to hear it, but there was also an agreement here to do or to heed what the Bible, the word of God, had to say. I think there's a lesson to be learned this evening that we need to be obedient to the Word of God. Obedient to the Word. We need to agree with the Word. I, I'm always concerned with people that want to take exception to the Bible. That's right. It, I, I don't understand that. Except that people somehow get to the idea that what I think or what I've learned or the tradition, or whatever, is more important than God's Word. Folks, when we get there, we're in trouble. God's Word is the absolute final authority for everything of faith and practice in my life and your life. God's Word. I didn't say I always liked everything that it says to me. Sometimes it says things that I go, Ugh! Fighting against it, it's like, isn't there a way around this? No. We do it God's way. That's what Peter needed to learn. And so in verse 6, it says, When they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net breaking. 
I can only imagine the look of, have, have you ever caught a big fish? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's something else. I, I saw, uh, somebody sent me a deal the other day, a guy caught a striped bass about this big. And I was imagining working that thing, you know, trying to get it. I mean, I've been out on the ocean and you hook on to a, to a halibut. And I have to tell you, after a while, at first it's really exciting, but after a while, when you're dragging that fish and that weight from 300, 400 feet down off the ocean, and you're, it's work after a while. But boy, when you, when one of them hits, and you're going, wow, can you imagine what these guys are like? When they, that net started jerking and pulling, and they're going, oh man. Wow. And they called for help. And they pulled him into the boat. And Simon Peter falls down at Jesus' feet. Here's the thing I want you to get. Notice Jesus was preaching to the multitude. And he stepped into Simon's ship. And he said, Simon, would you cast down a little bit so I can preach? And Simon said, okay. He cast out a little bit. Jesus gets done preaching and he said, uh, Simon, I'll put it in these words. I need to repay you. I need to bless you. I, I need to give you something. Because I don't owe anybody. So, Simon, let down the nets. And Simon I'm telling you, he's thinking, Jesus, it's warm. The fish have gone low into the cool water. They're not up here. We're not going to catch any fish. But what Simon didn't realize at the moment, that he is speaking with or he's been spoken to by the master of the fish who's able to direct them to come where he tells them to come. But the neat thing about the story is, Simon, I'd like to use your boat. Now I've used your boat, Simon. I'm gonna pay you for the use of your boat. I'm gonna reward you for being a blessing. I'm gonna reward you for being obedient to me. And I'm telling you, in my life, I've seen that over and over and over again. I've seen God do things that I can't explain. I remember being in Bible college and doing what God wanted us to do and things were tight. And I also remember getting a letter in the mail with a check in it from people we hadn't talked to that didn't even know we were there. I didn't think they knew. And we needed that so badly. But God says, I know your needs. You're doing what I told you to do. I'm going to take care of you. And we were in Southern California. I mean, that's worse than Egypt. You know? And God said, we're going to take care of you. I, I, he said, I'm going to take care of you here. And he did, folks. He did. He, he blessed and he provided. He doesn't owe me a thing, but I owe him a whole bunch. <clears throat> it's amazing. It says in verse 9, for he was astonished in all that were with him at the trough of fishes, which were taken. Peter fell down and said, depart from me. He said, I'm a sinful man. I mean, it was like there was this revelation to, to Peter that said, wow, this is not a mere man. This is God. I'm like Isaiah of old. I, I'm undone. And he fell down before him and he, he was astonished at all. And all that were with him, 
at the draw of the fishes which were taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. You know, when, when you do what the Lord says and you see the Lord work, the, there will be that astonishment. It'll, and it, you, you'll, you'll be so amazed. And, you, and the term I hear people say, I was just blown away. Well, astonished would be a similar word. I don't know where blown away came from, you know. But this, God does things and we just go, wow. And Lisa said, I went to work and, and I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it. They said, you know, we're just going to answer lights today. And she's going, wow. I didn't think I could handle that today. And thank you, Lord. Amen. We've got a great Savior. Amen. We serve a great Lord. You know, it'll turn your life around. It'll thrill you to serve the Lord when, when you begin to see him and see what he's doing. And, and when, after all this was done, and, and it says in verse 10, he, he gives them an assignment. He, he said, <clears throat> fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. It's the purpose of God for our lives. You know, I, I know people, I, I need a job. Jared said, I need a job. Why does Jared need a job? I know why he needs a job, so he can serve the Lord. Right? That's why he needs a job. So he can serve the Lord. That's why you have a job, so you can serve the Lord. This world's not our home, folks. We're, we're just passing through. These things are vehicles. That's the purpose of the Lord, that we're to reach people. And if we'll do what God says, it, it pays dividends. And it'll bring praise to him. Verse 11. Look carefully at this verse. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Did you get that? They forsook all and followed him. Wait a minute. They just caught this huge drop of fish to where the net broke. They haul it to land. And Jesus speaks to them and it says, and they forsook all and followed him. I'm thinking the multitude that day is going, wow, free fish. <laughs> Not often is it said that someone forsook all and followed him. You understand that separation from the world means the nearness to the Lord. James said in chapter 4 and verse 8, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw nigh to the Lord. We need to be separate from the world. The Bible t tells us to come out from among them and be separate. Here, here are these disciples separated from the, their livelihood. They separated from their, the, the people and their surroundings. They're going to follow Jesus, and that's what they did. They followed him. They became his disciples. And, and I, I, I really don't know all that was involved in all that they gave up. But I, all I know is that they forsook all and followed him. And I, I'm to, I meet so many people today that have so many anchors and so many attachments in this whole world. I'm so thankful tonight that I have the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Amen. 
But he's more than my savior, he's my friend. There, there are people in this world right now that can tell you that I'm not one of their favorite people. I should be. If you think, I mean, hello? <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? Well, sometimes when you take a stand and tell people the truth, they don't really necessarily appreciate that. Amen? They don't. But I, I'd rather be close to the Lord Jesus than to this world. And sometimes that means that I need to admit to let go of family to be close to Him. Separation it has to do with being close to the Lord, it has to do with an inward cleansing. It has to do with an outward cleansing. Just getting the taint and the stain of the world off of us. So we can be useful to him, that we can be honoring to him. Amen? Sometimes you can do all the right things in the right ways as far as man is concerned and still fail. What's important is to find out what God's doing and do it his way irregardless of what man says. That's success. That's where the blessings come. Do it his way. So how is it in your life? You still trying to do it your way? man's way we need to learn a lesson we do it God's way pray with me this evening Father you know me I believe that I'm not a whole lot different than everyone that's in this building tonight and I know that I can be like Simon. Be stubborn. Say, you know, I've, I've done what's right. I've done it without considering that you had another way, another purpose, another plan. And Father, I just pray that you continue to remind me of that, to work in my heart, in my life. And I pray that you'll do it for each and every person that's here. Father, I don't know the struggles that are going on, but you do. And I know that you have a plan to give victory. It's just a matter of trusting you. And I pray that folks will do that tonight. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name.